Uh, so hi, I'm Mark Callister, senior partner for Holborn Assets based in Cape Town uh, in South Africa. Yeah, so fintech is is pivotally important to our business. Uh, it's, uh, it's really at the core of our strategy. Um, we're very digitally focused. Um, so the main parts of that as far as clients will see is that we have uh, the latest up for minute connection through um, Holborn Exchange, which is our online platform for clients. But our advisors internally have the latest uh, generation of of technology from from their side of the business as well it's called advisor connect it really is a fantastic bit of kit that, that threads together everything that you want to need to do as an advisor um, and then on top of that our lead generation uh, which we do a lot of is very very digitally focused so huge amount of fintech now running through the whole business uh, i think bob mentioned digitize or die in an interview with you a few years ago and we've invested heavily in new systems and processes in order to meet that change and, and that challenge. But when people used to talk about fintech, especially in our space, it always used to be coupled with the threat of robo-advice to the traditional IFA. You know, will it replace the advisor? Um, and now the discussion is more about the integration of technology to complement and to complement the proposition be it greater efficiency, instant access to information, cost reduction through automation and so on and so forth. But I don't think that's now considered a benefit to a client. I think that's simply expected. Um, that's now the bare minimum. Um, and you know, today's client has different demands and expectations to what it did five years ago, and that will be different in the next five years. And that's the result of exponential growth in IT. So companies such as ours have to keep up um, and also looking forward, the longer, younger generations are tomorrow's clients and they will require a different kind of service, a different form of advice and interaction, and almost certainly a different and more conscientious approach to investment. And if we cannot provide that, if anyone for that matter fails to provide that, then I think both clients and advisors will look to someone who can. So it's critical. I think we have to stay ahead, but I don't think it's a choice anymore. I think it's a necessity. Interesting question, right? Um, you know, it's been around for over a decade if we use Bitcoin as the as the standard. So we have to come up with a way of explaining what this thing is, right? And there's two economic theories really that can explain it. So the first one, is is great a fool theory um you know so it's the it's the bubble theory of the south sea uh china shipping company uh, tulip mania whatever you call it um so yeah it could be something that is being overpriced it's in bubble territory um but the problem is when you look at it from a charting perspective it's been through several big you know price moves uh, upwards and and so you know if you actually also extrapolate it into the trading time frames as if it was a stock market it's effectively been around almost 60 odd years you know um so actually if if it's a bubble then it's one of the most unprecedented uh, bubbles from a time duration perspective um so a lot of people now start to say well if it's not a bubble what else is it you know what else explains why the price is doing what it's doing and the only other theory that holds water is is network theory, network adoption theory. Really. So we've all got phones on our desk, um, you know, maybe in our hand right now. Um, and I think that the only other example more recently that's also you know, very, very relevant is is Facebook. You know, so there's uh, an idea that Mark Zuckerberg sketched on a, on a bit of paper and a laptop in Harvard. Um, and then by the time it got to IPO, it was worth over a hundred billion dollars and now, you know, so despite that it's dropped today, you know, it, it's risen to a, an absolute behemoth and the world is meta. Um, what explains that price action really would be the number of users. You know, in fact, that's the, the reason they've sold off a little bit is down to the reduction in their monthly users, apparently. So, so the network has a value. So if you believe that what we're seeing is network adoption theory in crypto, then with something that has a fixed supply, um, then inevitably the price will continue to rise.
How long have you got, Gary? Um, I think we're going to have to split this one up into a few different segments. Um, okay, so regarding advisors, it's simple. It's down to education. Um, I see and hear people write this off all the time with little actual knowledge, which I, I find surprising. Um, I think you always have to be skeptical of your own opinions and you need to be open to change. Um, so I think each and every advisor should be putting in the time and the effort to learn about this space. In fact, I would go a step further and I would say it's, it's their obligation, it's their responsibility to educate themselves on this. Um, personally, I think technology is a one-way street. I think safe and world event, we're never going to live in a less digital age than we are today. So it's only going one way and I think with any new asset, volatility is to be expected. And you know, people will always be skeptical and have their doubts. You just look back through history and you can see evidence of that. You know, in the early 90s, they were auctioning off bandwidth, which people thought was crazy. Everyone thought early adopters of the internet and emails were crazy. And you can, you can go right back to the birth of the stock market and the issuance of shares. And that was banned in the UK for over a decade because the government deemed it too risky. But we live in a digital age and we already use digital money so i think any argument around that is completely redundant i think the question is does blockchain improve on the functions we have today in the present monetary and banking system and that to me is a resounding yes i think it looks it makes it look archaic so i think it's a question of when and not if and i think the adoption numbers prove that you know just ask any millennial if they would rather hold bitcoin or gold and then remember that one day they are going to be the ones making the policy. Professionally, however, and speaking as Holborn, it's a much bigger challenge. Governments, banks, regulators still need to catch up. And that means that credible partners are still in short supply because Holborn is certainly not going to be custodying assets. So until then, we wait, we stick to plan A, which is holistic advice. And when it comes to crypto, we'll provide education to our clients and we will continue to do so until such time we feel we're in a position to facilitate, to advise and execute on those investments. But the day will come. The pressure is there. The demand is already there. Um, so it's only a matter of time. I think we're past the point of just saying, don't touch it. I think we're past the point of just saying, you know, don't put money in that you can't afford to lose. And, and why I say that is the amount of scams that have, have managed to claim victims. South Africa, as an example, suffered hugely um, to a, a scam called Mirror Trading International. And there was another one uh, called AfriCrypt. Um, and in both examples, they, they managed to you know, catch the market and get hold and get a foothold because of a lack of regulation, a lack of knowledge, and a lack of, uh, of a, a point of view from financial advisors. You know, so when, when there is no uh, stance on crypto, then these kind of things can happen. They're dangerous, right? They are dangerous. It doesn't matter whether, you know, it was binary FX trading, you know, before that, um, it was carbon credits, and it goes all the way back to when Charles Ponzi created the Ponzi scheme. So it's very important that we as financial advisors have a view on it um, and that we're able to guide clients on it because uh, with all markets, there's an element of fear and greed, you know, and, and that fortunately, a typical retail investor will, will pile into a market at the period of, you know, uh, maximum financial uh, risk, you know, when the, when the FOMO kicks in and the fear of missing out. And, and then unfortunately, when the price inevitably corrects, you know, and, and the fear runs through a marketplace, um, you know, the period of maximum financial opportunity, and they normally miss that. So again, that's where financial advisors like us need to understand where it is cyclically. They need, we need to be able to explain what it is, what it does, and what the risks are with crypto. Um, so firstly, I can't divulge um, what we're working on, um, but there are things in the pipeline. I'd say we're a very dynamic and innovative business, so we're always looking for for the latest opportunities that we can present for clients if there's a need there. Um, so watch this space. You know, we have clients that have crypto already; they've bought it on an exchange, which is great. 
Um, but there's, the first point is if it's, if it's not your keys, it's not your coins. Um, so maybe there's a bit of guidance there about how do you secure crypto using hard wallets, that sort of thing. Um, so again, there's an educational requirement there. Um, and then we've got uh, clients that just want exposure to the price action. You know? So potentially that might be through some of the existing um, market options. There's exchange traded products you know, on the, everywhere from Switzerland to Sweden. You know, one of the longest uh, established uh, investment trusts in 2013 is in America. And, and inevitably, we will see, I feel, the, the American market um, approving, you know, the SEC will approve a Bitcoin spot ETF at some point, not just a futures one. Um, and then that will allow institutional investment as well. So, so yeah, so uh, through the number of those means, but also if, if clients are looking for specific advice around crypto exposed um, stocks and shares, like sort of my, MicroStrategy, you know, BitFarms and a few others, then potentially we can uh, we can show them which funds uh, that are on our whitelist have access to those specific asset classes. It's a great question. Um, so look, there's really is a sort of a dichotomy in the industry, right? There's there's a lot of uh, you're seeing the robo advice really starting to come through, or the robo platforms, the likes of uh, a Robinhood, you know, Hargreaves, Lansdowne in the UK. Um, so yeah, that, that that has a, a place in the market, but but still there is that need for a uh, hand on the tiller for somebody that you can trust that provides good solid advice on a wide depth of, of areas, you know, and that's where a solid, well qualified financial advisor comes in, and, and that's what Holborn's all about. So so from a fintech perspective, all of our clients have up to, up to the uh, minute access through Holborn Exchange. Our advisors have up to the minute the latest platform through Advisor Connect. It really is next generation. So you know, there's advisors listening to this that are still struggling with bits of paper and don't know what digital signing is and haven't ever you know, taken a new client on via Zoom. Then you need to have a discussion with us and we'll show you how to do business in the new world. Um, and, and as far as um, the, the service levels, you know, we are absolutely committed to our, our strategy around quarterly reviews. Um, and, and even though that might be on Zoom, or it might be face to face, we still feel there's a huge place in the marketplace for that level of trusted financial advice.